I've gone from playing for fun and playing for enjoying it to now sitting here and calling it my job. Growing up, I didn't have any female role models. When the time came for me to, to play or be called upon, I was ready. There's plenty of coaches that you can go to for whatever you want to find out. I was you sitting there and one day you can be me talking to the youngsters. When I get to see my impact on young girls and see how excited they get, it's a really cool thing for me to, to kind of see come full circle. The standard and quality of the FA Women's Super League is as high as it's ever been. We explore the impact that this is having and how investment into women's football is having an impact both on and off the pitch. Are we there with the league yet? Yeah, it's, it's growing stronger. You see that with the league table and the results and the players that are coming, not just to this club but elsewhere. Um, but in terms of where we're at, you know, attendances are the best they've ever been, average of attendances are up, consumer interest is up, number of broadcasted games is up, the level of media coverage is up, FA Cup final that we, the restart of FA Cup final, you know, there was 1.9 million people watched that at the peak audience, and which is, you know, an increase on the year previous again. So every year, so bit by bit, as I said before, there's another layer. The standards of the game are rising all of the time. And just the investment you see now across the Women's Super League and the players that have come into the league from around the world this season, standards are rising. We've heard about how the WSL is growing and the benefits this is bringing. Just how important and relevant is the power of sport for females? Girls and women who play sports have been found to have increased self-esteem, a more positive body image, lower depression levels, and greater confidence. So sport is integral and so important for girls and women. Soccer is such a unique and special tool um, and vehicle for people to express themselves and to um, be part of a team, which is so valuable. So I'm just excited and I think um, things are going great and can only go up from here. The academy provides an incredibly important platform for young girls coming into the game and aspiring to be the professional players of the future. And that's something that I'm sure the likes of Steph Horton, Jill Scott, Karen Barzi look back on with some envious eyes compared to what it was like in their day. The access to these amazing facilities that we have is incredible and something that many of the senior players never had access to um, when they were sort of my age, so I'm very lucky to have come in at this time in women's football. The Etihad campus is a fantastic facility. It meets every young developing player's needs as well as those of the most accomplished professional players in the game, men, women, kids just looked at it and thought like this is a place I'd love to come and learn love to come and improve my football and and be around the girls that were here now because there was the likes of the older players the more senior players who are also in the England squad and like I wanted to be like them and I thought coming here was the best place to do that and obviously with the facilities the place we're in right now is it's incredible it's probably like one of the best if not the best in obviously the UK right now to train every single day at facilities like this and to be coached and managed and to have the right medical treatment and to the nutrition support. Your psychological development, your physical development, we've got so many staff who work in those areas, multiple physios who are just looking out for you and checking in on you all the time to make sure you're developing at the rate that you can do. The support network that the, the club has put together is incredible and it's likeable to that of the men's. I feel like physically um, and then even just tactically like from a learning perspective I have so much to utilize and um, it's such a great place to be um, just in that sense where like you really have everything that you could ever need and as long as you're utilizing it there's no way that you couldn't get better. Our team get everything that any of our other team would, would do from the boys academy to our men's team. It's, it's exactly the same in terms of the support, the resources, the expertise, the knowledge that sits within. Um, and I think that that's been beneficial obviously to the players and evident when you when you see them playing not just for their club but for their country. As a team we're really lucky and we know how fortunate we are that that we can ice bath from day to day, we can use the cryo, we can use our gym, the men's gym, um, obviously the food, breakfast, lunch, not many teams get that so we are in a really privileged position and I think just for performance side of things we have everything 
to be able to perform at our optimal really. Girls now have that opportunity to just be full-time professionals, focus solely on football and I think you'll see the benefits of that in the standard of play and hopefully at international level with English players being better and having that environment from a younger age hopefully we'll be able to push on on the international stage and sort of reap the benefits of these opportunities that we've been given and the facilities that people have access to now from such a young age. The great thing about the Etihad campus is it brings people together, it brings our best men and our best women together under one roof where they can support one another, they can watch each other train, you know, you sometimes see the men dropping in to watch a women's session or vice versa. We really want to shape the future of women's football and being alongside the men's teams and the junior teams and the women's academy really helps that. We're just pushing each other, trying to make each other better and I think being around here, being around the club with the staff that it's got and the facilities that we're in, it just helps it grow even more. Like years and years ago you wouldn't expect like female football to be this big and have the facilities that it does and it's amazing to see how much it has improved in like such a short space of time. We've got to now focus on, on the girls' academy and the pathway. I think that's an important piece for the women's game in general. We've created this pathway where if you think uh, a young girl maybe uh, 10 years ago, maybe even five years ago, was pulling on a Manchester City shirt and, and would maybe put have a Sergio Aguero on the back because that, that dream of being able to become a professional footballer at, at Manchester City wasn't there. It, it was non-existent. But now a young girl can wake up for Christmas, get a Manchester City shirt, hopefully, and have Sam Mewis, Rose Lavelle, whichever player that you want, to, you want to choose on her name and have that tangible dream of actually I'm a 10 year old girl and I want to go and play for Manchester City. I always thought when I was younger that I'd just play for the men's team, like I envisaged myself playing alongside Sean Wright Phillips and Richard Dunn, because I never realised that there was an opportunity to, to be a female footballer or play in a women's team, but now obviously it's so widespread and there are so many opportunities to become a professional. I think it's incredible for girls to be able to look up and see that they can have this as a job and they can have a career in the game and they can really achieve whatever they want to in football. We have such a good pathway through Centre of Excellences that we have here at the club to allow girls to be coached at a young age by good coaches but also it's the normal to have a girls, girls football team at school. Man City was one of the first clubs to really focus on and invest heavily into its women's and girls academy structure and it, it provides the opportunity for girls to come in um, see a very clear route to the professional game, some, some simple clear stepping stones that they can think if I make this progress and I do well, there's the next step, there's the next one and it makes the potential to be a professional player of the future and to play for Man City real for them. I think we're sort of starting to get sort of the correlation between the men's and women's games and it is exciting to see so I hope there will be improvements in the future so that the younger generation coming up like know a pathway and, and know that it's possible. I look back and it was only around 15 where I thought oh wow I could actually probably achieve something within the game whereas I think now you've got young girls that are age five six even younger dreaming of being your next Steph Houghton or or things like that so I think for me that's so exciting. Just what is important for female representation and how can football help with this? We will hear more about inspiring the next generation in our final episode. Are you personally inspired by any of our players? To know the incredible power that comes with being authentically them. I want women and girls to know and to see themselves represented in positions of power in corporate America, in public office, and, and even on the football pitch. The female athletes of the women's team like Rose and Sam personally inspire me and my daughter day in and day out. For our final episode, we will hear about the future of the sport, what is needed to support those future stars whilst continuing to develop the current first team. We'll also hear about commercial growth within women's football and the opportunities this can bring to help raise visibility and continue to grow the sport. And finally, some of our very own players will offer their own advice to any young girl who dreams of one day becoming a big name in the women's game.